interview. Hello again, everyone. This is Max McGee here at Bethesda Softworks BFG Press Event in Park City, Utah. Today, I'm talking with Todd Howard, game director on the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Todd, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, Todd, so obviously we have a lot to get to, so let's just dive right in. Can you tell us some about how combat's going to work in this game and some of the changes you guys have made from previous games? So what we're doing now with combat, you know, it, it, even though it's a big role-playing game, you talk to people, you explore a world, at the end of the day, you're going to be doing a lot of combat. You know, you're going to be bashing a lot of creatures in the head with maces and axes and swords. Just, it's what happens. So we do spend a lot of time on it. Um, and what we've gone with is kind of using the triggers or the mouse buttons for you're going to play what you know what do you want to put in your hands do you want to use a, a sword and a shield a two-handed weapon multiple spells so we kind of wrap combat and magic into one one system um, and there are moves you can do based on perks you pick um, and the various skills for combat but it really is a nice kind of organic system for what your play style is Yes, I saw on the demo you had like a sword in one hand and a fireball in the next and you can like mix and match depending on what you want to play. Yeah, it really is. As opposed to starting the game and saying, I'm going to be a wizard in some menu or I want to be a warrior. It's, you know, we want to treat it as, well, what are you actually doing? That's who you are. Okay, so if you're going to put a sword in one hand and a spell in the other, you're kind of this spell sword guy and both of those skills are going to go up. You can dual wield spells. So you can put a fireball in each hand and, and kind of do that, or then you can pull both the triggers, build up this really big fireball, and use that, but that'll eat more of your magicka. So it becomes a nice system that, as opposed to the game rewarding you for what it wants you to do, this is what you told me your character is. It's going to reward you for what you're doing right now and how you play. So in addition to swords and sorcery, there's also these new uh, dragon shout abilities. Can you tell us more about how those work and how we'll go about acquiring them? and how they tie into your character's role as a dragonborn. So in the previous Elder Scrolls lore, we had the Thum, the ability to shout, which is this power the Nords had from long ago. Um, that is the language of dragons. And now dragons have returned. So when our dragons are breathing fire, um, it's not you know, it's not some physical thing. It's, it's, it's magical by them speaking these words. The dragons are talking in their language. And you can learn that language as well. You learn these words of power and you put them together. So even though you're putting what you want in either hand, you obviously still have your mouth, and you get to pick a shout that you're gonna be using as well. Um, and there are these big battles with dragons you have that become these shout battles where you're shouting back and forth at each other. It's really something unique and, and pretty cool. Now on the topic of dragons, um, from what we saw in the demonstration, it looked like there were these roving boss fights that would occur randomly, sort of like the big daddies in the Bioshock series. Is, uh, can you tell us more about that? They do kind of fill that role if you were to take, it's actually in, in our initial design, you know, they fill the role of a mix of a big daddy in Bioshock and a helicopter in Half-Life 2. Um, like they're, they're scarier than a big daddy um, and because they're swooping around. You can't really, and you can see that in the demo, you could, sometimes I would lose it, I didn't know where it would go, it's very unscripted. Um, so there are things if you're going to defeat, you are going to have to use a lot of resources. Um, and when you defeat them, you, because you are dragonborn, you absorb the soul of the dragon. And what that means, we're not talking about quite yet. So can you tell us more about how enemy scaling is going to work in this game? Are enemies just going to match your level, or are there going to be areas that maybe you shouldn't go to just yet because it's a little too difficult? How's that going to work? It's very much like the way we handled it with Fallout 3, where there's some amount of leveling in some areas. It kind of is like a tether system we have, um, just to keep it interesting. But there are areas that are a lot harder for your character, there are areas that are easier, um, and then we'll randomize some of those based on your level, but if we say this level is hard, um, it, it's going to be hard, and then if you go and leave and come back, it'll, it'll be the same. So it's, it is very similar to how we handle Fallout 3. So naturally, as you're fighting all these enemies, you're going to be gaining a lot of experience and leveling up. Can you explain in more detail some of the, the changes you guys are making to like the skills and the perks and, and how you go about customizing your character? So the the big thing when you level up is you do get to pick a perk. We have these perk trees for every skill. So you have 18 skills, and as you use them, they increase. And then when you level up, once you increase enough skills, you level up, and then you get to pick a perk. Um, the perks, like good examples are in one-handed weapons. There are perks you can pick that, like, I want to specialize in axes. And axes cause bleeding damage over time. 
or maces ignore armor, or blades do critical damage. So even within those skills, there are things you can specialize in. We actually found coming off Fallout 3 that some of the joy in leveling up, not some of the joy, a lot of the joy in leveling up is picking a perk. Um, and so we wanted to bring that into, into this game. We have a lot of perks. Okay. Now to switch gears a little bit here, can you tell us uh, about some of the changes we can expect between the console and PC versions of this game, be it graphical or gameplay or otherwise? Well, gameplay, it's going to be exactly the same. You know, you're going to get some interface differences on the PC. We have designed an interface even on the consoles that shows a lot of information. So I think visually, we're not going to have to change it too much on the PC, just how you maneuver it. Um, as far as graphically, we, we author the, all of the graphics really high end. So the game's going to look the same on all the consoles, but the PC by its nature, and because you're sitting closer to the screen using a PC, you're going to sit a few feet away, as opposed to six, eight, whatever you're going to do in a console game. Um, you know, it does come with higher res textures. Um, depending on your PC, you're going to be able to jack the resolution up. But also, if your PC isn't up to uh, all that, our graphics are really based on level of detail, how we stream things. So you can, you can scale those things back. And I've just got two more questions for you because we're about out of time. Can you give us a brief rundown on what the modding tools will be like for this game? Because obviously, The Elder Scrolls has always had a very vibrant modding community. Yeah, we're, we're big fans of that. Um, you know, our, the modders out there who use our stuff, they do incredible things. They spend a lot of time on it. Um, we've tried to support that well over the years. And so um, we want to come out of the gate, hopefully, on release day with the creation kit, which is the editor uh, for this game, and they can be uh, off and running. So the, the tool we have, the creation kit, has a lot of new stuff in it um, for this tech that our old things didn't, from how the dialogue works, the scripting language is all new, um, and just the amount of stuff they're gonna be able to do, particularly with like Radiant Story. Um, you know, we're, we figured out how we're using it right now, but it is a really powerful tool that I think once it's out in the wild, you know, we're going to learn a lot because there are so many people using this and they're going to do a lot of cool things. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. All right. And finally, can you remind us at home uh, when your game's coming out and what it's coming out for? Um, it is coming out 11-11-11, November 11th uh, this year. Uh, PC, PS3, 360. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, and there you have it, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. As always, stay tuned to the site for more information.